Hey y'all. Nita, welcome to those who Hello, welcome to Bcentric TV. My name is Nita. Welcome to those who are joining us for the very first time and thank you to those who are returning. If you have not already, please be sure to subscribe to this channel and if you like this video, like the video. The button is below and also be sure to share it to whatever platform allows it. All right, so let's get into the video. So basically, I am going to talk about how I had to check myself as a so-called privileged dark-skinned woman, right? So I was on TikTok a while back and I saw a few videos um, in regards to dark-skinned women, but in particular, deep, deep dark-skinned women and how they experience colorism differently than other dark-skinned women. Now, initially seeing a video, I'm like, what? I'm like, this is crazy. Like, you're dark-skinned, we're all dark-skinned, we experience colorism, all of that, this, that, and third, right? So... I'm looking at it initially like this is very divisive. This is crazy. Like we already got enough to on our plates like being divisive within the dark skin community when you already have, you know, the lights, you know, the, the the colorism and the division between light skin, dark skin and the brown skins in between fight for their lives not to be considered dark skin. It's so much. So it was crazy to me. But I'm going to get into how I really had to check myself. But first, let's get into the definition of what colorism is. Because a lot of y'all still seem to not quite understand what colorism is. So, colorism is prejudice or discrimination against individuals with dark skin tones. Typically among people of the same ethnic or racial group, but not exclusively. Now, prejudice against dark skin tones, which means a light skinned person cannot experience colorism. So just as there's no such thing as reverse racism, there is no such thing as reverse colorism. It just does not work that way. You cannot be privileged and oppressed under the same system. It does not work that way. Yes, you can be discriminated against. Yes, you can be teased, bullied, and all that. But you do not experience colorism. Just as white people does not do not experience racism. But they can be discriminated. It's, it's, it's different. It's not the same, right? So just give uh, examples of shades. Uh, these are from my perspectives. I know sometimes skin tones are very subjective, but to me, I think these are kind of cut and dry. So I would consider someone like Viola Davis, uh, Coco Jones, and Kelly Rowland. I would consider them dark skin, right? Are they all the same complexion? No, but they're all dark skin. I would consider light skin, of course, Beyonce, uh, Rihanna, and someone like uh, Lisa Ray. I would consider them lighter skin. Are they all the same complexion, same undertones? If you understand undertones, no. But they are all considered light skin. Now, then you have the brown skin girlies. Now, this is where it can get a little tricky and become very subjective. But to me, these women are brown skin. I would say Meg Thee Stallion, Carisha, and contrary to her name, light skin Keisha. I think those women are somewhere in the middle. I wouldn't I would never look at them as light skin, but they're not dark skin either. They're somewhere in the middle, right? That's just to give a view of pretty much I, I think that's pretty much most people would agree. If you if not, let me know in the comments respectfully. Like I stated before, light skinned people do not experience colorism. You cannot be the oppressed and the privileged with under the same system. It just does not work that way, right? Most dark skinned people are not mad at you for being light skinned. You cannot control how you are born and most of us understand that. However, with me saying that, I'm not negating anyone's experience if you've been bullied because you've been light skinned. But remember, you did not experience colorism. 
I think a lot of the issue comes in with darker skinned people being upset with some lighter skinned people is that when a dark skinned pe person does speak on their experience, it's almost like they're shunned for speaking on it and they're automatically labeled as jealous. And that in itself is highly, highly annoying. I know it's definitely happened to me where I'll speak on a certain subject and automatically I'm told I'm playing victim and that I'm jealous. Jealous of what? Like, come on. It's the most annoying thing. And some light-skinned people, the problem comes in is when you act oblivious to your privileges, you deflect, you gaslight, and you just straight up hold colorist practices. Many of you... Kiki with people who talk down on dark skin, uh, people, many, there was girls, especially we, I ain't even gonna say girls, women out here who head get boosted soon as a dude tell them, oh yeah, I only date red girls and things like that. They look at that as a badge of honor and that's a problem. That is nothing to Kiki and smile about. Like that's, that's a problem. That's, that's not cute. Like, I don't even get, like, I feel like it's a badge of honor if a guy comes to me and say, you know, I only date dark-skinned women. Nigga, I don't care. Like, it's not a, it's not even a badge of honor for me, okay? Because what are you saying? Now, if a man says he only dates black women, yes, you know, that, that, I'm like, okay, I, I feel good when I hear that. But when you separate the complexions and all of that and things like that, th that is not a badge of honor. So please understand that most dark skinned people, like I stated, they are not jealous. And if that is the first thing that comes out your mouth soon as a dark skinned person speaks on their experience, nine times out of 10, nah, 10 times out of 10, you are a colorist or you uphold a lot of colorist views. You have just not come to terms with who you are and your poor mindset. And that is a problem, right? So, uh, getting back to the topic, now that y'all understand what colorism is, or I hope y'all understand, some of y'all will never understand, but anywho, um, as a dark skinned woman who has been considered, uh, not that dark, I had to call myself out because I was sounding like many of or some of the some of the light-skinned people out here who tend to you know deflect gaslight and things like that and like I said it was based on a TikTok video that I saw I really wish I would have saved those videos I watched like two of them and then I stopped watching because I, I was like this is foolishness but when I ran across um a lady that I follow on LinkedIn and I started following her YouTube channel. Uh, her YouTube channel is called Colorism Healing. I will put the link in the description so you can go subscribe to her channel and learn more about colorism because she really goes into depth. Her name is Dr. Sarah L. Webb. So I ran across one of her I ran across one of her lives one day and her life what is what really made me understand and really made me made me had to like check myself and kind of look like hey you do have some level of privilege right she talked about this line and i'm gonna read uh she went into depth in it in the live i don't have the link to the live i'll like i said i'll put her channel down there maybe you could find it but she also wrote a community post and i'm gonna read the community post for what it says so you can kind of understand. So it's called, she said, calls it the pastry line analogy. Privilege is not all or nothing. It is more like standing in a line. Even if you're not the first in line, you may still be ahead of several other people. If there are a hundred people in line for an assortment of 99 donuts, every single position in line counts. The closer to the front, the more options you have, the further to the back, the fewer options you have. And if you're last in line, you may be left with nothing at all. So like I said, in the live, she definitely broke that down a little bit more. But um, when she said that, it kind of like a light bulb went off in my head. Like, ooh, did I just really 
Now, under those people TikToks, I didn't make no comments, so don't get it twisted. I ain't say nothing under their comments, but in my mind, I did very much dismiss their experience as very deep, dark skinned black women, right? And I was like, dang. I really just did what some of these light-skinned people do. I really just was like, I said the same stuff. Like, oh, we all dark-skinned. They don't, they look at us as dark-skinned as one. Just as light-skinned people will say, oh, they all look at us as black. We're dividing ourselves. It's division and all of this stuff. And that's what I said in my head. And it's not all the same. You know, at the end of the day, someone or I may be considered more conventional looking, even though I'm darker skin, I may be closer in line to the donuts to get a better picking than someone who is darker than me. They're dark skin, but they're darker than me. They may be further in line through. And of course, we know skin complexion alone is not the only thing. You have featureism, texturism, and a lot of other things that does uh, come into play when it comes to, you know, desirability and things like that. But this isn't just about desirability. That's why I do like her channel and I like uh, listening to her because so often we minimize colorism as when it comes to just dating, dating preferences and things like that, when it's really much bigger than that, believe it or not, a lot of this affects the workplace. And that's a lot of what she talks about mostly is in the workplace. She really doesn't talk about preferences and relationships and stuff like that. I think maybe she touches on it, but I, it's more so about the workplace and helping corporate America and things like that recognize their colorism practices and their hiring and different things like that, right? She talks about how white people see complexion too. Cause a lot of a big misconception that I do hear a lot of black people say is like, oh, we we the only people um worried about light skin, dark skin, white people, all they see us, they see us all as black. That is not true. And we really should know that's not true because the division was created by white people um through white supremacy back in slavery when they separated the lighter skins and the dark skins the field from the house right so they created that whole system and even as you go on and you look at um different scenarios in life lighter skinned people are more favorable because they are considered less threatening Darker skinned people are, including women, are considered more masculine. So a lot of times they're looked at as more as a threat. Even when you think about situations where you have a light skinned girl or a light skin and a dark skinned girl about to get into a fight. A lot of times people will bet on that dark skinned girl that she would beat that light skinned girl because they looked at her as being harder. Same goes for light skinned men and dark skinned men. It's the same thing. Dark skin is just typically in society looked at more as masculine. That's why a lot of times you see situations where darker skinned women feel like they got to be a little bit more dolled up and do a little bit more. Whereas you can have a mid light skinned girl. She can do the bare minimum and she's just the finest thing on earth. You know, so and and in that aspect, but then also walking down the street, you know what I'm saying? In business practices, people who are closer to the complexion of a whiter person are typically um, looked at as smarter, more intelligent, and different things like that. You don't have to believe me, but you could check the stats on it. It's literally statistics that have proven and different um, things that show this. And she talks about that too, right? Um, it's, it's, it's deeper than desirability. It's deeper than uh dating preferences so someone under uh i believe my pretty privileged video did uh, make a comment and it did resonate with me and they stated that you know privilege is invisible to those who have it right so in that moment while watching that tiktok video i just combined all of the same because it's, it's kind of been like that most of my life um like, I, I I never heard that I wasn't that dark until maybe in my later 20s when I start hearing people say, well, you're dark skin, but you're not that dark. But all prior to that, I was just dark skin. So a lot of my experience is just that of being dark. Never really thought about um, 
a separation of dark skin, right? And that there's levels to it. And there are levels to it. And that's where it comes in. That's where the line comes into, the pastry line. There are levels to it. So because I am closer to the front of the line, someone that's a lot darker than me with certain type of features may not have the same opportunities that I have. And um, I have to recognize that. Lighter skinned people should recognize that. There is a level of privilege and it's almost like some people don't want to recognize that and they're rather just write people off as being jealous or um, having a victim mentality because it's, it's the easy thing to do. And maybe if they recognize their privilege, somehow they start to actually feel responsible and they don't want to lose or feel like they ever ha get to lose that privilege. You won't lose that privilege because it's going to be there, you know, because you can't change who you are. Right. So when someone is speaking on their experiences, there are things that we can do to, you know, help, you know, not it may not be anything that you can do directly. You know, it's not like going out there marching and all of that stuff like that. But it's just like if someone is talking about their experience, just listen. Just listen, just hear them. You don't always have to insert, you know, your experience when someone is talking about theirs. Because a lot of times when um, I do see posts where dark skinned people are talking about their experiences being dark skinned, in particularly women, there's people under the comments, oh, y'all always talking about dark skinned women, but light skinned women experience colorism too. I was bullied for being pretty and light skinned. You know how that go. And then sometimes there's men under there, uh, dark skinned men. They'd be like, oh, y'all dark skinned women, uh, dark skinned men, y'all shunned us dark skinned men back in the 80s. It's stuff I've seen on social media. Um, it's things I've seen on social media, basically, where, you know, there's always someone inserting and everyone's experience is valid, right? But when someone is giving their experience, just listen to them. Um, and someone speaking on statistical truths and their experience does not equate to them having a victim mentality. My experience as a dark skinned woman does not make me a victim because some of it was bad. In no shape or form am I, um, playing victim. It's just things that happen in my life. It's not saying you have a victim mentality. It's not saying I'm walking around with my head down. I'm not jealous of nan light-skinned girl out here. Nan light-skinned woman, nan person. So at the end of the day, it's not playing victim because someone is speaking on statistical truths. It's, it's their truth and it's the truth that's in the stats. If you don't want to recognize it, that's your problem and you are part of the problem if you don't think it's important that's you but there is some impressionable dark skin girl dark skin boy out there who it does matter to and who it will matter to and how society treats and handles this issue will really affect them it's going to affect them right we like to say, well, you have to instill this in your children, and you should. You should instill uh, good things in your children, good self-esteem and all of that. But at the end of the day, none of us walk this world alone. We're going to have influences outside our home. I don't know why some of us can't understand that. The parents can do but so much. They can do all they can do, but when they walk outside that door and listen to their little friends, listen to these kids, listen to watch the TV, listen to the music, all of that is influenced. I don't know how y'all don't think this stuff is influenced. It's all influential. Representation is important. If this wasn't a thing, there would not be a discussion about it. It is a thing and it is very much real. You cannot disrupt and dismantle the system of racism that all of us want to dismantle, but uphold a system of colorism. You have to handle that as well. It just doesn't work. Oh, racism is, go well, don't, 
don't know if it ever go away. You know, I'm not trying to be a pessimistic, but I do think, although, you know, we should still work on, work on fixing as much as we can possible. People right. that say, well, why y'all keep bringing this up? And, you know, you get a lot of that and get a lot of that under people's videos and posting different things. Why you keep bringing up? It shouldn't matter. We're all black. Uh, it's, is that all y'all think about? No, that's not all we think about, but it's reality. Like I said, there's going to be some kid out there that's going to have an experience and someone that's outside the home or even inside the home is going to, um, point out or make them feel bad for who they are right and that should not happen no matter what complexion you are a lot of people like say we have bigger issues to handle i mean this is part of white supremacy and if we want to dismantle that system you have to tackle the subcategories as well you can't win the war without fighting the battles this doesn't work that way you know, it's it's not productive to continue to try to sweep it under the rug. Clearly, that that's not working. It's not working. <laughs> it's not working because we're still fighting for a true representation of black people. Right. Of all complexions. Yes, there are tokens out there because I know some people are going to say, oh, look at Lapita. Look at Viola. We get it. There are a few. When you're not willing to have a conversation, hear people out, listen to understand, and you act as if it's not a real thing, you act as if just not talking about it is just going to make it go away, you sound like the very white people that we take issue with when we talk about racism and systemic oppression. Think about it. You're literally regurgitating the same rhetoric that they say, that they speak when we're dealing with racial issues and systemic oppression. So take that, you know, how you want it. But anywho, I hope that my experience taught you something. And maybe those out there that had the same mindset of my, as I did you know, can kind of reconsider. Think about it. Think about your level of privilege and how maybe you can help the next person by even just, like I said, by simply sometimes just listening and not perpetuating the very things that keeps and upholds the system of colorism. So until next time, be beautiful, be black, be you, like, share, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you later.